Thunder, 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 thunderwing, ho! Welcome to Kapow Toys Presents, I'm your host King Grimlock, and today we're going to be looking at Generations Thunderwing, if you couldn't tell from that natty intro. Right, let's have a look at this bad boy then. Now then, straight off the bat, I'm going to say it, I'm going to get out of the way, he's too small. He is massively too small, this guy should have been a Voyager. Um, he has got his feet sticking out, um, but yeah, he should have been a Voyager there. Everything about him is supposed to be massive in scale and power and everything. And while it is an absolutely fantastic looking piece in both modes, it does lack any real sense of scale. Um, but let's have a closer look at the alt mode and uh, everything that's good about it is on the top half. Detailing is superb, um, especially around the back area where they've sculpted in these, these runners sort of going down into the feet to hide it as much as possible and everything clips together quite nicely and hides the, the fact that it is just the feet hanging off and that's added to by the fact that on the back you have the feet making up the afterburners or the jets or whatever it is um, you also have them on the, the gun barrels as well and it creates a really nice overall aesthetic um, to that part Colour scheme is superb, paint apps are brilliant, um, the colour scheme is great off the back, this grey, this sort of creamy grey, grey grey, 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 works really well with the blue and the gold and the minor bits, and this orange um, clear plastic is stunning. The only downside is the fact that you can actually see the green on the underside um, from the arm, I'll show you in a minute, um, and I don't know, it would have been nice if it matched up, but or been hidden away entirely, because it kind of just detracts a little bit from the actual figure. Um, the inclusion of the little areas of black on the lasers there and on the wheel are really nice, but the main problem, of course, is going to come with the fact that he is... Oh, yes, yeah, so there is that little panel of black on the back there. It breaks it up. I don't know why. It shouldn't work as good as it does, but it just breaks it up nicely and adds to the detail of it. Um, the big problem, of course, is going to come from the robot hanging off the base of it. And it isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I mean, it is noticeably a robot hanging off there. You can make out the whoop. You can make a whoop. Make out the arms. You can make out the legs, the feet. Um, and as he came out the packet, when I opened him, he was like that. Not really too subtle, unfortunately. Um, it does mean, however, he does have quite a good... Because this isn't a stealth jet, as he's supposed to be in the instructions. He does make quite a good interstellar rocket, which means he can stand up on his own. Um, and does have some areas of playability in this mode, obviously. the What do all good missiles do? They fire. Um, wheels go in and out, both on the front and the back. But the other areas are, of course little drone. Now this guy is based on the Pretender shell rather than the actual robot inside. Uh, both modes are. And this in the G1 incarnation would have actually been the robot. And it did attach to the front as this one does here. Um, and the detailing on this again is absolutely fantastic. Picked out moulded lasers and the little sort of scout eye very reminiscent of like Skystalker or something like that. And the fact that he even has gone to the extent of putting a booster around the back. And everything fits in quite nicely. Uh, just literally clips in and then the wheel slots in to hold it into place as well. It's really nicely done. Downside of this mold, obviously, is, of course, the bloody great robot on the bottom. Um, and these lasers are actually slightly rubberized, slightly soft. Because, of course, kids are going to poke their eyes out with them. They're going to thrust them into their eyes because they've got nothing better to do with their time. You'll give them spring-loaded missiles that might launch randomly at their face. But, yeah, you don't need to worry about these little pointy bits. Um, the other things is, of course, uh, the wings are actually, these little wings are articulated past the transformation. So if you want him to look a bit more narrowed in or completely flat, it's just, it's not much, but it is nice to be able to have um, an additional, little, it's just a little bit of pliability to him. But realistically, if you bought this guy, it is for the transformation, not for the transformation, I'm sorry, for the alt mode, because you're going to be a fan of G1 Thunderwing. Um, this isn't something I imagine you're going to randomly pick up off a shelf. So shall we take a look at what this guy can do? And what Thunderwing gives you in his robot mode is there's a very, very nice representation of both his IDW form and paying homage to his G1 format as well. The detailing is superb, the organic areas around the chest and around the ribs are lovingly done, and the gold paint picks out these lovely piping areas all around the body as well. It works really well. The transformation itself is probably needlessly complicated for what it is. I mean, realistically, you could have just slid the legs down, 
and folded the bits up at the back and you would have had the figure. But as is, you actually lift all the chest out and the legs fold out on a on a sort of a Z-Bend system and the wings lift around. And it's, it's not majorly difficult, but it's needlessly complicated. It adds something to it. And we'll probably st stop detractors going, it is just a bit of a simple former. Um, what you do get, though, is obviously... Very nicely structured bot, quite diminutive inside. He's actually about the size of one of the classic seekers, maybe a little bit shorter. But he's got the girth, he's got the build to him. We'll look around the figure. All nicely detailed on side. Obviously, you can then make out quite a large amount of back kibble. Now, it doesn't really feel that kibbly, um, other than obviously the jet bit. But the actual um, the wings themselves don't feel that kibbly. They really work to add to the character to, to give him that sort of thunder wing, uh, the, the sort of super thunder wing um, aesthetic that he had in the IDW comics. Um, his articulation is superb. Um, the feet actually are on slight little turn ball joints, um, so they can't really do too much, but they do move. The shoulders move up and down, hips move up and down, and I actually found out recently that he does actually, well, say recently, he does actually have a thigh swivel, as I think nowadays all good toys should have, but it's that tight that it's actually, you can just about make it out there, it's actually split um, the seam and the gold plastic, the gold paint that was over it, so it's actually, both on both of them, has actually damaged the toy to actually incorporate one of its, uh, one of the swivels. Um, he does have brilliant wrist articulation, elbow and um, bicep and on the shoulder as well. His head isn't ball jointed, it is just on a rotation and does have some quite epic light piping uh, which is always nice. And the overall aesthetic is lovely, it just would have been nice if he was somewhere up here rather than somewhere down here. And he just doesn't seem to have everything to him and that is my only complaint. Everything about him is excellent. The design is perfect, and for you know, you can say it's a very simple transformation. And yes, he does have quite a lot of robot hanging on the underside of a jet, but it works really well, and it works well for Thunderwing because Thunderwing was not one to be subtle. In all, I couldn't recommend this guy highly enough. The only way I could recommend him any higher was if he was actually a Voyager. But you've just got to go out and get one, in my opinion. You've really got to pick one up because there's everything right about them. And it's only the fans that go and pick these guys up um, that will make Hasbro make more of them. Because this isn't going to appeal. Or this has got no no appeal to anybody reading the comics at the moment. As I say, his only appearance has been Stormbringer and I think in um, Devastation. Um, it, what, which is what now going on three years ago, four years ago from IDW. So that's his only recent appearance since like the late eighties, early nineties of Generation One. So your average layman Transformers fan isn't probably going to know who this character is, and will pick him up on aesthetic value alone. So it's up to you guys, the collectors, to actually go and buy him. If you do, you're going to be getting a rather tasty looking bot in both modes, and you're going to be encouraging Hasbro to make more of these, pay homage and give a little bit of fan service, which at times isn't that bad. Anyway, I've been King Grimlock, this has been Generations Thunderwing, and we will see you next time, guys. Mm -hmm.